Thank you for being here on our webinar Wednesday. My name is Zach Passmore and I'm an enforcement attorney here at the Department of Consumer Affairs. Uh, I am tasked today with uh, providing some information for the upcoming uh, sales tax free weekend uh, that's coming up this weekend. So tax free weekend, which begins this weekend is um, it's a period of 72 hours where consumers can get certain items without having to uh, pay state taxes on them, including any local taxes uh, that are uh, that are imposed by the county in which they're buying the, the product. Tax-free weekend starts this Friday at 12.01 uh, in the morning and it lasts through Sunday, August 4th. You can you can purchase you can purchase the items both in store or shop online. If you're shopping online, the tax will not be assessed. Uh, now it's important to note that not all products will be tax free over the weekend. It is a it is certain uh, certain categories of products typically related to um, school education, things of that nature. But what it does include are computers and printers, school supplies, clothes and shoes and certain bed and bath items. There are several categories of products that are not included in the tax-free weekend, and that includes things such as digital cameras, smartphones, jewelry and cosmetics, eyewear, wallets, watches, and furniture. So basically the things that will be tax-free this weekend are things that pertain to um, generally school items. Uh, for more detailed lists on what is and what is not included in tax-free weekend, I would recommend you go to the South Carolina Department of Revenue's website. They're the hub in the state for all things tax-related. So uh, you can click on the link in this presentation to go to the tax-free weekend page um, to, to get more information on what is and what isn't included this weekend. So that's pretty short and sweet regarding what tax weekend or tax free weekend is, uh, but it's important to also highlight a few general shopping tips for anyone that is interested in uh, partaking in tax free weekend. So one tip could be to download the store apps, uh, makes shopping more convenient uh, for you and also allows you to see possibly what particular items are in stock during tax-free weekend uh, should also provide in many apps a portal for you to make these purchases and you should not have the tax applied to your purchase. Another general shopping tip is to be prepared, know what you're going after for tax-free weekend, create a list of all the things that you will need and um, shop accordingly. Uh, one thing it's, it's worth noting as well, kind of in general, not necessarily including tax-free weekend, but although uh, you may not be charged tax on certain items this weekend, it is possible that you can find better deals outside of tax weekend, either before or after, uh, whether or not a certain business has items on sale. So just because you're not being charged tax, on tax-free weekend, it is possible that if you're patient or uh, if you're doing your research beforehand, you may find some better deals regardless of whether or not the tax is being uh, charged. It's also worth checking retailers for any kind of price matching policies that they have. You may find better prices at different stores and it's worth inquiring with another business that you may be uh, hoping to shop with to see if they do offer any kind of price matching. Another important shopping tip, uh, just in general, is to know the return policy of the store that you are patronizing and to keep your receipt for the purchase. Uh, know before you go whether or not that uh, whether or not certain items are eligible for a return policy or exempt from a re return policy. Um, if, if the item that you're looking for is not in the store, it's worth noting that you may want to ask specifically about the return policy of items that a business may specifically order for you, uh, because it is possible that uh, should you need to return that item to the business, there, there may be some sort of restocking fee. 
Um, I know that is that is a a possible policy that many stores have for kind of large um, large value purchase items like computers. They may charge uh, a certain percentage restocking fee to return an item. And of course, if you do need to return an item, make sure you have that receipt so you can um, you can you can prove that the purchase was indeed made. Uh, many businesses do require a receipt to finalize a return. Some other general shopping tips. Be sure that you are protecting your information while you are shopping, uh, especially, or, or this, this point here is for specifically if you are shopping in stores, you may want to consider minimizing the content that you keep in your purse or wallet. Uh, a common example of this, I know um, it's, it's common practice for people to keep their social security card uh, on them, either in their wallet or in their purse. That's not something that is advisable because, you know, if you, if you lose your purse or your wallet, then uh, your, your social security number is less secure. And it's not necessarily some information that you need while you're out shopping. Another thing to be aware of when you are shopping in person is to be aware of card skimmers. Um, while it may not be a, a common practice, it, it's not an unknown practice that there are scammers out there that, that can uh, place skimmers into card readers and they're actually skimming the information that you um, are legitimately giving the, uh, a business when you are, you know, swiping your card to make payment. Also beware of what we call shoulder surfers. These are the people that might be looking over your shoulder while you're punching in your PIN number. Uh, just be aware of your surroundings and make sure that no one is attempting to get that information from you. Another general shopping tip is to consider what payment options you have available. Uh, using a debit card is not typically advisable um, because credit cards offer much more protection for fraudulent purchases. So one thing to consider is, you, is especially if you're online, you may want to consider using a credit card uh, over your debit card. Uh, the debit card is a direct link to your bank account uh, and a credit card has more, uh, more protections for fraud and also has they have things in place such as um, chargeback and dispute of purchases, things like that. Uh, and as I said, direct, uh, debit card number gets stolen, that's direct line into your bank account. So if your debit card is lost or stolen, be sure to notify your bank immediately. And as I said, it's advisable to never use your debit card online. Some more tips, be sure you're monitoring your statements on these accounts. Continue. Um, uh, frequently check your accounts for any authorized for any unauthorized activities. If your uh, banks or lenders uh, allow the option, and I believe nowadays most of them do, set up account alerts that notify you about any spending or balances of your accounts. You may want to consider enrolling in a credit monitoring service if that is something that you are particularly um, concerned with. Uh, regarding identity theft or or things like that, it may be worth um, a membership with a monitoring a credit monitoring service. So since tax free weekend also includes online purchases, it's worth talking a little bit about shopping and surfing uh, for products online. And kind of as I've already said previously, it's important in all things to do your homework. Um, especially online scammers are very good at setting up fake websites that look legitimate. So before making any purchases or giving any uh, financial information, be sure uh, that you are in fact on a reputable source website. Before you make a purchase, it's also worth reading the reviews on those items, uh, both on the website that you're looking at and possibly from other sources. Just to make sure that you know this is a pro this 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 is a product that can be stood by, or you know that consumers are actually receiving uh, what they're buying. Uh, you'd also want to be aware if 
the store has a physical location rather than being web-based only, and you want to be aware of any customer service information um, that that is available through the store. And you may even want to consider calling the merchant in advance to confirm that the information that you found is correct. To kind of add a little emphasis to the fact that scammers are out there making sites that that um, may not appear to be legitimate, there are some that may not be secure. Um, most, if not all, reputable retailers have secure websites. Uh, and that is something that can be easily found by looking at the uh, address bar in the, bra the, the browser that you're using. Uh, typically, what you'll see is a is a kind of a, a flag or or some notification that a website is not secure but if you have the green lock and you have https at the start of the website that is a good indicator that the website that you are visiting is a secure portal um, and if you are on a website for payment that is not secure uh, do not at all <laughs> insert any financial information. Also be aware of what a merchant is asking for when you are trying to make payment. Do not give away all of your personal information. If they're asking for more data than you feel comfortable sharing, um, don't, don't continue transacting with them. Um, you should only need to fill out certain required fields at checkout. And it's advisable, even though many, many websites do offer that you save your payment information in your profile, it's a good idea to not, uh, to not save that, that information just as a precautionary measure. Um, as far as protecting your identity and privacy, beware of free Wi-Fi hotspots. Many public Wi-Fi networks are not secure, which could mean that anyone may see what you are doing while you are connected. For that reason, it is inadvisable to log into any accounts like email and financial services on a public Wi-Fi network. Um, you also want to consider not making purchases in general on a public Wi-Fi network. But some ways that you can protect yourself on a public Wi-Fi network is you may want to consider using a VPN or a virtual private network or a personal mobile hotspot. Um, these methods um, separate your your internet information from the uh, from the main Wi-Fi um, and especially if you have a personal or a mobile hotspot you will not be on the public Wi-Fi network at all all of this to say that it is very important to be aware of scammers or identity thieves um, now not every scam leads to identity theft but it is kind of the way in for for a lot of identity theft um scammers are attempting oftentimes to get as much personal information from you as possible so that they can use that information for other purposes the types of ways that they may attempt to get your information um vary in many forms uh it may be through a phone call it may be through a direct mailer in your mailbox or text messages or email or a fake website it's possible they, they may even show up in person or on social media. So it's always important to um, just uh, be aware of the issue. One of the ways that scammers attempt to, to obtain your personal information is through a method known as phishing. Um, this is how scammers attempt to fraudulently obtain usernames, passwords, credit card numbers, or other sensitive information. The way that they do that is usually through an email or a fake website where they want you to confirm your personal information. They may come to you with claims of suspicious activity or login attempts on a um, legitimate website that you may actually use. I was reading an article recently that um, a, a consumer was scammed out of a, a significant sum of money using this method. It was a scammer who appeared to be his bank, claiming that um, he had suspicious activity in, in logging in on his um, account page. But typically, the, the method is similar. They'll claim that there's a problem with your account or the payment information you provided, and they, they will ask you 
to either click a link in their text message or email uh, to confirm your information. Or if it's on the phone, they may ask you to confirm your identity using things like your social security number. Another method that the department is aware of is they may contact you and say you're eligible for a government refund or some other kind of offer of a coupon or other, um, or other free item or service. This slide has a, um, a sample or an example email that, that, that someone may see uh, for a phishing attempt. So if you look at it closely, well, if you look at it at first, you're thinking that you're getting an email from Bank of America and you may have an account with Bank of America, but it's important to look at the details. For instance, if you look at the, um, the from line, while it says it's from Bank of America, pay careful attention to the actual email address. It says it's coming from a Comcast.net uh, email address. That is not something that Bank of America would be using. Also, take a look at the two line, the recipient line. It just says undisclosed recipients. It doesn't show you, uh, it doesn't show your email specifically, and it indicates that multiple people may be getting this notice. Um, another thing to look at is who it is addressed to the body in the body of the email. It may not list you specifically. It may just say dear member, and that is because the scammer does not have your actual name. So all, and you'll also see in the body of the email that there's a link that is telling you to click to sign into your account. So all of these are kind of red flags um, that, that should raise concern that this is a possible scam. So one thing you may want to do if you do get something like this, do not click any link that's in the body of the email or call any number that's in the body of the email. What you would want to do is independently find uh, the contact information for the bank or the merchant and verify independently um, a contact for that entity and follow up with them as to whether or not this is a legitimate attempt to, to get information from you. This uh, slide has an example um, of a text message phishing attempt. I know that I get these, uh, not, not I, I wouldn't say regularly, but uh, I do get them from time to time. But you'll get something saying that your account is being debited for a certain item that you don't remember purchasing. Um, I know I've also gotten ones that say that, you know, this is you have a package on the way and click this link to confirm with UPS your address or, or, or any such thing. But usually it'll give you a link or it'll give you a number to call. Uh, but I mean, that's usually a good indicator that the message you are getting is not legitimate. So with keeping your information protected in mind, there are some things that you can do. Uh, one of those things is to protect your personal wireless network at home. You'd want to secure your home router. Uh, that could include changing the default name of the network and the unique password. Uh, routers in general are typically assigned a unique password from the manufacturer. A lot of times that password can be found online just in documentation or instruction manuals for the router. So it's important if you are getting a new router or you're getting a router from your cable company or, or things like that or phone company, uh, be sure to change that password immediately. You would also want to turn off remote management if you can uh, so that it can't be accessed or the, the, the options for the router cannot be accessed externally. You also would want to consider using WA WPA2 or WPA3 encryption. You also may want to consider setting up a network firewall, which is a piece of hardware or software that protects and controls traffic on your network. If your router has a firewall option, it is advisable to enable it. Now, outside of your own uh, network, there are many things that financial websites and merchants can 
set up to help you monitor your accounts and protect your privacy. Um, this includes setting up account alerts. Banks and credit unions offer alerts on your accounts. You can also enable uh, extra login protections outside of just entering in a username and password. You can, and most of these types of websites do offer what's called two-factor authentication. Uh, basically what that is, is when you attempt to sign in to a, um, a website, you will either get an email or a text message or possibly a phone call from that company with a, uh, a code or a link or something like that um, that you would then input uh, back on the website and that verifies that you are who you say you are. You also might want to sign up for My Social Security from the um, Social Security Office's website where you can review your future retirement earnings, taxes, and any other benefits. You can do this by Googling My Social Security. It's also important to at least annually check your credit report to make sure that the information on it is accurate. Uh, checking your credit report can uh, possibly identify unusual activity or possible identity theft. Uh, through the uh, credit bureaus, one free report from each credit reporting agency is available to the public every week. It does not contain a credit score, and like I said, our recommendation uh, here at the department is to, at a minimum, review it carefully annually. Some other protections that you have through the credit bureaus include things such as establishing a fraud alert. A fraud alert lasts one year, and what it does is it alerts businesses that may be viewing your credit report to take extra steps to verify your identity. For example, if I've placed a fraud alert with the credit bureaus on my credit report and say I am attempting to finance a vehicle at a car dealership, they will get a note when they're running my credit that they need to take some extra steps to verify that I am who I say I am. And of course, once that is done, um, I will be able, they will then be able to, to access my credit history to make a credit decision. To place a fraud alert, all you need to do is call one of the uh, main three credit bureau agencies, TransUnion, Experian, or, um, gosh, I'm sorry, I'm liking on the third one. I always forget one of the three. <laughs> but if you call one of them, if you call one of them, uh, and say you want to place a fraud alert, they will they will reach out to the other two and get that fraud alert placed on your account. A more secure and uh, possibly more drastic measure is a security freeze. This is something where your credit report cannot be accessed by anyone, including yourself, until uh, you either uh, thaw you know, uh, or or lift the freeze. So basically, to use my example, if I have a freeze on my credit report and I go to a car dealership and I attempt to finance a vehicle purchase, uh, they will not be able to access my credit report, even though I'm the one requesting it. I have to lift that, that freeze in order to allow them to access my credit history. Um, it's free to place it and it's free to lift it. It stops anyone from accessing your credit report, which means that no new lines of credit will, will be started in your name. I mentioned thawing. Uh, that is when you reach out to the credit reporting agencies directly and let them know beforehand that you intend to apply for credit. They can then, what's called thaw, the freeze, which which will then allow you to 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 utilize your credit. This one is a little bit different from the fraud alert in that you do have to reach out affirmatively to each of the three major credit reporting agencies in order to get a uh, 
a freeze placed on your credit, uh, they will not reach out to the other two to get this on. So that's the end of the presentation today, but our department does have several resources available on um, identity theft um, and other uh, consumer issues that we have available on our website or you can contact us. Uh, we have hard copies as well. We can send them out to you. Uh, but like I said, they cover all sorts of uh, consumer issues and has uh, useful information for you. I also recommend connecting with our department on social media. We have presence on Facebook and X, formerly Twitter. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel where uh, a lot of our presentations are recorded and stored. So it, it would be worth checking out SEDCA TV on YouTube uh, for additional presentations. Well, I hope this presentation was useful for everyone who is here today, and I wish you a good rest of the week and uh, happy shopping over tax-free weekend. Thank you.